So I'm Mrs. Wong and I am going to be giving you guys chemistry notes via YouTube and haiku posts, which will save us a lot of time in class and then we can save our class time for working through problems and exercising, ans answering questions, exercising, <laughs> who wants to exercise during chemistry class, you know what I mean, and uh, going over tests and of course labs. So I really hope this works well and I hope it's a good way to give you notes. And once in a while, you're going to hear my kids in the background, but such is life. I hope you enjoy that. So, first of all, RDO's chemistry. What is chemistry? Chemistry is the study of matter. Let's write that down. Why are you saying to? I'm giving some notes for chemistry. Can you, shh, so I can finish my work? Well, I'm going to do it with you. Chemistry? Yeah. is the study of matter. All right, so chemistry is the study of matter. And what is matter? Matter is two things. Anything that has mass, for purposes of this first module, you can think of mass in terms of having weight. So matter has mass. And secondly, matter takes up space. Let's write that down. With my purple marker, matter has mass and takes up space. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So in chemistry, we will be doing a lot of studying of this matter and we will be measuring matter a lot, which leads us to have to talk about units. How do we measure matter? Well, if you look at table 1.1 in your book, I forgot to tell you, but when you are sitting down to look at and watch these notes videos, it would be most helpful if you had your book out in front of you, along with, obviously, uh, some paper and a pencil and also a calculator, or perhaps you will be using your phone as your calculator. So have that stuff all with you and ready. So right now we're taking a look at page five, table 1.1, physical quantities and their base units. When we measure matter, we need to speak in terms of units. If we are measuring mass, for example, we can use grams or slugs something that I've never actually used before except for in this course. So you can see that there are two different unit systems. The base metric system, which makes a lot of sense because it's all based on tens, right? Um, and then there is the base English system, which is a bunch of kind of random uh, numbers. And for some reason, that's what we typically use here in the United States. Um, if you're going to measure distance, you speak in terms of meters in the metric system, or feet, or miles, or yards. Volume, we use liters or gallons. Time, we measure in seconds and seconds. That's the same. So table 1-1 one, one you need to be familiar with and know. Uh, for example, if I say, how do we measure volume? What are the, our units going to be? I want you to be able to tell me you measure volume with liters or milliliters, okay? Flip the page over and table 1.2, you will see common prefixes used in the metric system. These you should have memorized. Actually, not all of them, um, but you do need to have the ones that are in bold for sure memorized. You'll be using those a lot. Milla, centa, and kilo. Okay, you need to know those prefixes and their numerical meaning. That is from table 1.2 on page 7. Um, I'm going to write that in your notes here, okay? So when we're measuring matter, we use units. And we're just going to write C tables 1.1 and 1.2. And remember to know and understand and even memorize those bold terms and numbers. Uh, so that's units, measuring matter. Turning the page, 
uh, we're gonna start talking about converting between units, okay? Sometimes when you're measuring something, you might measure it in meters, but it makes more sense to give the answer in centimeters. So you wanna know, okay, if I have this many meters, how many centimeters does that translate to? Uh, hopefully you guys have had this experience in other science classes and other math classes, which will make this a lot easier for you. But I do wanna make sure that we are all on the same page with how to do that. By the way, this first chapter, module one, is a lot of math. And hopefully it's a lot of math that you've already had, so it's kind of dry, um, maybe just a touch boring. But make sure that you understand it. Let me know if you're having any difficulties because we're gonna be using these concepts um, all throughout the book. So we wanna make sure that we're all starting strong and that we know how to do this stuff. What was I talking about? I guess, converting units. Well, the way that we're gonna do it is called the factor label method, okay? Factor label method. This is for converting units. Okay, so first let's think just in terms of numbers without even putting any units like centimeters or grams in there. Let's think in terms of numbers. You learned in math classes that if you had a multiplication problem between two fractions that looked like this, seven over 64 times 64 over 13, that the way to get this answer, well, there are two ways. When you're multiplying fractions, you can multiply straight across the top, seven times 64, come up with a pretty big number, or you can, and then multiply across the bottom, 64 times 13, come up with a big number, and then you'd have to reduce the numerator and the denominator. However, hopefully you look at the, a problem like this and you realize that if you have a 64 in the denominator and you are multiplying it by a fraction that has 64 in the numerator, those two 64s cancel each other out. And so the answer, much simpler way to get to it, uh, is 7 thirteenths. Okay, we're using this concept when we use the factor label method. Uh, it is a way to convert, again, I'm repeating myself here, it is a way to convert between units using this setup and canceling, instead of canceling numbers out, you're canceling units out, okay? Let me show you an example. Let's take a look at example 1.1 on page nine. It says, a student measures the mass of a rock to be 14,351 grams. What is the rock's mass in kilograms? Okay, so the student measured the rock 14,000 and some grams that's a lot of grams. So typically when you are weighing something that has that much mass, right, you would use kilograms, not grams. So we're gonna convert from grams to kilograms. This is example 1.1. 14,351 grams converts to how many kilograms, okay? First thing we want to do is write down what we know about grams and kilograms. Is there some sort of ratio or equality we know that relates, relates grams to kilograms? Yes, there is, you memorized it. Uh, we know that one kilogram equals 1,000 grams because kilo, or the K here, stands for 1,000, that's how we remember it, okay? Then, after we've come up with the equality that we need to use, we're gonna start our problem with what we know, 14,351 grams. We're gonna set it up by placing it as a numerator and putting a one as the denominator, and we're going to multiply it by this. We're gonna turn that into a ratio or a fraction. Okay, but the next question is, do we put grams or kilograms on the top? Well, remember we want to get rid of grams and we want our answer to end up in kilograms. 
If we want grams to cancel out, and we have grams in the numerator here, grams must be in the denominator for the next fraction. So grams goes on the bottom, and kilograms goes on the top. How many kilograms to how many grams? Look back to our equality here. One kilogram, so after we have the units, then we fill in the numbers. One kilogram, how many grams? 1,000. So to work the problem out, we would do 14,351 grams times one divided by 1,000. Our answer would be 14.351, and our units, the grams cancel out, so our units are now in kilograms. And we have solved the problem. So that's how we are converting between use units using the factor label method. Please know this, please use this method. That's example one one. Let's try another. Example one two is on page 11. Let's flip over there. I need to erase this. I hope you guys didn't mind that I assigned you a whole module before school starts. Hopefully you guys are somewhat like my daughter Claudia, who is so excited to get back to school that she is not minding needing to get started with some assignments right now. And hopefully you are budgeting your time so that you're not having to cram before school starts either. I would not want that. Okay, so we did one uh, converting units problem. We're gonna do another one. This time we're gonna convert units from the metric system, uh, excuse me, from the English system to the metric system, okay? Example 1.2 says, the length of a tabletop is measured to be 37.8 inches. How many centimeters is that, okay? Example 1.2, we are starting with 37.8 inches, and we want to end up with centimeters. How many centimeters is the question? So first, what do we know that relates inches to centimeters? Um, there's another table that you need to know about, table 1.3, which is on page 10, shows you the relationships between some common English measurements and the metric. Uh, measurements. So you can see there that one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. One inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Okay, so that's the ratio that we're going to use in our factor label method. Now we start with 37.8 inches over one times this ratio. Okay, is inches going to go on the top or the bottom? Well, we want inches to cancel out. It's in the numerator here, so it's gonna go in the denominator here. Inches goes on the bottom, centimeters goes on the top. Fill in the numbers. One inch, 2.54 centimeters. Okay, you'll see that the inches cancel out. And the answer, when you put it into your calculator, right now my calculator is my phone and I'm using it to record myself. So I'm going to get the number from the book here. Uh, when you multiply that out, you get 96.012 centimeters, okay? And that's how you do converting between one system of measurement to another. Now there's one more type of conversions that we're going to practice. It's a little bit more complex, as your book puts it. And this we will find in example three, which is on page 12. Example three, the mass of an object is measured to be 0 0.030 kilograms. What is the object's mass in milligrams? All right, let's get started with that. Example 1.3, 0 0.030 kilograms. And we want to find out how many milligrams that is, okay? Now we don't know the direct relationship from kilograms to milligrams based on what we had to memorize. But we do know 
that one kilogram equals 1,000 grams, and we know that one gram equals 1,000